Hello everyone, I'm WFXR Sports Director Jermaine Farrell. Welcome to the WFXR Sports Sit Down on WFXRTV.com. Each Tuesday and Friday, I will have a special sit down, one on one interview with a person in the world of sports. It is our commitment to bring you a special look at these people and share their stories with you on WFXRTV.com. Again, thank you so much for logging on to WFXRTV.com for the latest edition of the WFXR Sports Sit Down. Enjoy. We have a, an honor, it's, it's a joy to have a guy that played for four teams in Major League Baseball. I like saying baseball, but it's baseball. <laughs> uh, pitcher, extraordinaire, 10-year career with the Angels, the Twins, the Rays, and the Rangers. He's all AL all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Jefferson, how you doing, sir? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's an honor. Uh, first of all, and I was going to ask you a couple of baseball questions, but we're going to start off obviously talking about cup check game. And I've seen the video on it, and it's it seems like it has a, a unique mixture of disc golf to it. But for those who don't know about the game, explain the game. How'd you come up with it and just the background behind it? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it is. It's it's definitely got some, uh, some finesse to it. Um, like you said, disc golfers are – somebody who you don't want to run into in a, in a cup check tournament because they don't miss. But uh, yeah, so it started back in 16. Um, we had an off day. We were playing the Dodgers. Uh, I was with Tampa at the time and we went out onto the beach and we needed something to play. Um, so we kind of came up with this deal. We had uh, four six foot long PVC pipes, um, some solo cups and two Frisbees. And it's kind of a mixture. It started out just as a mixture of trying to make kind of like a Polish horseshoes, but more action, right? It's more stuff going on all the time. Cups flying off, you know, diving in the sand, the whole deal. Um, and we fell in love with it just as kind of a, a game for ourselves. Um, and then we went to NASCAR that off season. Uh, there was about four or five of us that went to NASCAR and we were going to camp out for a few days, um, you know, there in Phoenix at their, their raceway there. And we want to bring this with us, but, Obviously, we're going to be on concrete. There's no way to, to get these poles to stick in the ground. So, you know, we ran down to Home Depot, got some two-by-fours and some cinder blocks, and somehow made these things stand up. Um, and honestly, it was just so we could bring the game and, and play it there. And we, we couldn't have guessed the, the reaction we were going to get from people that we didn't know. Just everybody camping around, coming over, trying to figure out, you know, just what in the heck we're playing and what is this thing. And, and uh I mean, next thing you know, we're kicked off our own game and, and just swarms of people are playing this thing. And we're like, you know what, we should we should try and uh, do this. We, I think we got something here, um, you know, and here we are four years later. So it's been around for four years. And so since 2016, it's that's when we first yeah came up with it and, and had the idea of we're going to make this. We've only been uh, what was it Memorial Day of uh, 2019 was when we actually launched. So just over a year. I guess the big thing is how, I mean, how does, how would people acquire the, the tools for the game? What's the price point on it? Where can people get the game? Yeah. So, uh, cupcheckgame.com, uh, it's 59.99. Um, and you know, it ships to you. Um, like I said, we're, we're still grassroots right now. So, you know, we haven't had made it into any box stores or anything like that. We're just trying to get it out there. Um, so people actually know what it is, right? I mean, we, we've sold, uh, you know, quite a bit of, of games, but as, as a whole, as, uh, you know, as many people there are in this country, we're still, there's so many people that don't know about it. But uh, the, the feedback we've gotten from this, from people respond to us, emails, you know, um, social media, they love it. Every single person that's gotten the game has absolutely loved it um, and wanted to play. So that's kind of our, our mission right now is just to get it in front of people, get it out there, get as many games where people can uh, play it because we know they fall in love with it. This might sound like a silly question. I'm, I love Shark Tank. I love watching that show. Yeah. Has it ever crossed your mind maybe to go on Shark Tank, maybe to get it out there, maybe get an investment or something like that? Or do you guys really want to go that route with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, last summer we got in touch with uh, the producers, of, you know, in Shark Tank, and they sent us all the the paperwork, you know, all this the what hundreds and hundreds of, of pages that you got to go through and and let them know what your thing is. The the problem that we've run into with Shark Tank is because I'm the only one of 
the owners that are, are done playing. The rest are all still Major League Baseball players. And as you know, they're going back to work, right? So um, Shark Tank only films in June and September. So all the guys are still playing. Um, you know, and I don't think I hold enough clout to go on that show myself. Personally, we need some, uh, some of the other guys on there. So yeah, that's definitely, um, they love the idea and they are, you know, have been very open as far as, hey, when you guys want to do this, you know, let's, you know, start the, the ball rolling and, um, you know, we'll go down that path. So it's still, it's still there. Uh, it's still an option, but uh, we just, we haven't been able to, to tackle that yet. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Shark Tank, Kevin. That'll be <laughs> some cool stuff. There'll be another Kevin on the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing that really spoke to me, you, you guys have come up with a partnership with the Testicular Cancer Society. Just talk about how you guys linked up with them and just that mission with Cup Check and the Testicular Cancer Society. Yeah, so um, as, as ball players, you know, through our career and, and a lot of, some of the guys have their own charities, but we've all, you know, we all enjoy giving back, um, going to, to fundraisers, you know, children's hospitals, all that deal. Um, but since so many of us kind of have avenues that we'll, uh, you know, kind of donate to, we felt Cup Check kind of needed its own, right? So Cup Check needed to stand alone. Um, and that was unanimous from all the guys that Cup Check needs to give back. Um, so we're trying to figure it out, right? It's, it's, there's a lot of great charities um, out there. And we just were, you know, kicking around some ideas of, of what we need to give to. And it was last April and we're getting ready to launch, right? We're, we're a month away and we're, we're really going at it. Okay, we need to figure this out. And it was brought to our attention that uh, April was the Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Right. Well, so there you go, Testicular Cancer Awareness, Cup Check, it's the, uh, it's the number, <laughs> it's the number, one, uh, number one cancer in males, 15 to 35, which all of us fit into. Um, there's been multiple uh, ball players that have been diagnosed with testicular cancer. So it just checks so many of the boxes. And we felt that it, it because it wasn't the first one on our, our list or even kind of knew about, we figured, you know what, this, this can use some notoriety. And so uh, we reached out to them and, and they've been amazing. And so we've, you know, partnered up with them to raise awareness um, about that. Well, that's awesome. Well, I tell you what, I mean, I, I think no pun intended, you're going to knock it out of the park with this because I've seen the game. It looks pretty cool. So, I mean, in $60, I mean, that doesn't seem that much money in, in the concept of the game. So, we, I think we it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. We tried to do our research. You know, you go around and you figure out, uh, okay, what are games, you know, selling for? What are they uh, – and, and we just tried to be, you know, competitive and right there with uh, both of them. Obviously, starting out, um, you know, your margins aren't what, uh, you know, a spike ball will be at the same price point. But, uh, you know, we didn't want to be in a situation where we were pricing ourselves out and, you know, you're, you're um, done before you even get started. So uh, we want to be competitive and, and uh, make something that people, it wasn't going to break the bank for them to go out and, and have fun and get outside and enjoy. And talk about your major league career again, a 10 year career all in the American League. Uh, and you, like I said, the neat thing is you're looking at your history. You were you know, born in Anaheim, California. How cool was it to spend some time, you know, with your career, with your hometown team, which back then it's weird. They, I guess now they call them the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim or the Anaheim Angels or whatever they call them, whatever day of the week. But right. how cool was it to, play for your hometown team yeah it was um I mean it was very exciting I got drafted by the Angels and uh I mean I was obviously excited just to get drafted in general right it could have been a team I never heard of before and I would have been pumped but uh on, on top of that yeah uh was born there my dad uh worked at the stadium you know when he was in college my grandma used to work there during baseball season and do the tickets out front um I think my aunt worked there at some point so you know, a lot of my family members, you know, worked there during uh, the times when the baseball was going on. And even back then, the Rams used to play there, right? When it was, you know, Coliseum before they took out the outfield. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of history there in, in my family. So to be able to get drafted by them, um, you know, make it to the big leagues with them and spend, uh, you know, the bulk of my career there, it was, 
yeah, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything better. But uh, I, I'm, I'm glad as, as a, you know, person, when I first got drafted by them, they had the old school cutoffs with the pinstripes and was it the, the, the bat with the wings. And um, so I, I personally like the, the uniforms better now than they were in the old school. But uh, good stuff. Now, talking about today's baseball, obviously the big announcement is they're going to play a 60-game season. And when you look at it, it's kind of neat that they came up with that number. Obviously, there was a battle between the players and the owners, and I'll ask you about that in a second. But first of all, now that we know pitchers and catchers, the three great words that everybody loves, July the 1st when they'll be there and then they'll start playing a month from now, roughly today. What does this mean to have baseball? We know it's coming back. What does that mean? Yeah, I I think uh, there's a lot of agreement with me to just say, you know, finally, right? Like we've been all been waiting. It's like, okay, thank you for coming to an agreement, getting baseball back on the field. I, I think everybody's been ra- waiting for that and, and excited that we can just do it. And being from a guy that knows and been on a lot of playoff teams, once you hit August 1st, you know, you roughly have 60 games left in the season. I mean, it's a sprint, right? So it, it now all of a sudden it's, you know, who's in it, who's not. And, um, those last two months are, are, are exciting. It's fun. And I personally think that these teams, every single team is going to be in, in the race. I mean, I don't know that there's ever been a time where you're going to have all 30 teams, you know, tied with 60 games left to the season. It's probably never happened before. So <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot different strategy going in. I think it's going to be interesting to see how many teams, you know, have a different kind of strategy of what they think is going to, uh, help them fit. and we I think we're going to see some different teams in the playoffs uh than than we would have if if the game started April 1st. So I'm excited to see what happens. I know it's different and and all this build up the last few months has kind of been kind of a drag on it, but I think get the product back on the field, 60 games, you know, race to the finish and um I think it's going to be very exciting. Now, something, like I said, you know, I'm a baseball fan, and one thing that still blows my mind even to this day, the rules. Like, case in point, the National League pitchers, like if you were in the National League, you'd be a batter, (laughs) and the AL had the DH, but now it's universal DH. It's kind of like the equivalent, like if you were looking at the NFL, the AFC would would have the two-point conversion, and the NFC doesn't, or or something like that, or – so in NBA, the Western Conference had the three-point line and the Eastern Conference didn't. So why do you – I mean, in your opinion, are you in favor of the DH or are you in favor in general, okay, either we all have the same rules or different rules? Because to me, as a broadcaster and a fan, it was kind of interesting that the National League didn't have the DH and the AL did. I personally – you know, like you said, I've, I've been in the American League my, my whole career. I think that – from my personal standpoint, I think it puts a better product on the field if you go unanimous DH. I think it allows the pitchers to pitch, do what you do best. It adds an extra hitter that might not be a great fielder that might not, you know, be able to work his way into a line because he's just kind of stuck in the National League his his whole career. And, um, you know, and then all of a sudden he doesn't get the shot that, you know, a, a big poppy. I mean, what if big poppy was just stuck in the National League and then just kind of never was able to get a chance in the American league where he can actually be a DH. Um, so, I mean, that's my personal opinion. I, I think that back in the day, yeah, you had guys like Babe Ruth who could hit, you know, 50 homers and be a 20 game winner on the mound. It's just, it's too competitive nowadays that I think, you know, the days of, of bunting guys over to second base are, are dwindling. Um, Let's get somebody out there can hit. Let's make it exciting. Um, let's make it exciting for the fans and just put a unanimous, you know, across the board. American League, National League, DH. Um, you know, and then you get to the playoffs and it's, it's uh, I think it's just ready to go. Best team's going to win. You know, that's it. Not uh, four games in the National. Where's the advantage? I mean, it, it's baseball is such an old sport, which it makes it great as well. It's been around for so long. But I think it's time to kind of evolve, like you said, it, in football, it just wouldn't make sense to have a two-point conversion in, in one league and, a, you know, you can only get one point for the extra point in the other. It just I, – I, I don't think that uh, – I don't think the fans are, are, are wanting that as much anymore. Maybe some of the old-timers that just 
you know, I wanted the same baseball I watched, you know, when I was growing up, but um, I would like to see him change. You know, it's funny. I remember when they brought in interleague play, everybody hated it. And now it's kind of pretty cool to see that. Yeah. So I, I, I've always been a fan of interleague play, but that's just my opinion. It's Jermaine Curl's yeah. opinion. Yeah, I do too. Uh, do, do you I like do. it? I mean, do you like it? Yeah, because, I mean, when I first came up, yeah, you'd play – we'd play the Dodgers, you know, because it was the, the freeway series. But then you would only play a couple teams in, like, a week span, and then you were done for the rest of the year. I love the, the extended interleague play. You get to play so many more teams. And as a player, you get to go and see all the ballparks. You know, there was a lot of uh, American League only guys that I played with that, you know, didn't see a lot of the ballparks because they just never ended up playing enough interleague to go to see those other ballparks. So I love the interleague play, uh, playing all the teams, going to see them. But, uh, yeah, like you said, it's it's weird at first and it, you're going to get a lot of pushback. But then, you know, I think everybody grows to love it. Now – and I got a few more questions. The the big battle, and it just seems like it's all about money when these things happen. And I was a you being a player. I mean, you've seen it firsthand. But to say to a casual fan, when things are going the way they are with the fact that, you know, you guys are making, and, that, and I'm saying every, not every baseball player is a millionaire. I know that. But when you see players that are making a pretty good living and owners making a pretty good living and they're fighting over money, and then, you know, the casual fan, they look at it funny. How can you put it in plain terms for, say, the casual fan to say, hey, you know, we're fighting for what we believe in when it comes to being compensated? Because I'm sure your average fan probably looks at you guys like, you got the owners and players arguing over this money. When Yeah. <laughs> and that's the hard part right now, too, is that, like you said, you got millions of people losing their jobs, right? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would enjoy taking a pay cut to still be getting paid um, and going to work and all that. I personally think that on both sides, right, the owners, the players, uh, I, I think it drug on too long. I think part of it became a, a, a fight, you know, that, that could have been had a year from now for the collective bargaining, um, you know, and it would have been nice to see, you know, both sides come to the table and agree to, put our differences aside and let's just get a product back on the field for the fans, you know, because the owners and the players both need the fans. Um, yeah. Yeah. I definitely think it drug on too long. And I think uh, a lot of the, the arguments were issues that could have been argued on a year from now. Um, and the, yeah, the fans are never going to, to agree with one side or the other, you know, unconditionally when you're arguing over that much money at times like this. Um, you know, they don't, they don't like it when baseball's had strikes in the past when there hasn't been any of this going on, let alone when, you know, there's other pandemics and, and other things in the world that are just crushing people. Um, so I would have liked to see it get, get resolved a lot earlier. I just, I think that both sides, um, you know, kind of drew a line in the sand and Nobody, nobody wanted to cave, right? It became uh, not, you know, who's going to win this battle as opposed to let's just come together we're both going to get you know take a, a cut of, of some sort but let's just get on the field and, and we'll figure this out next year but you know unfortunately the, the good news is is that uh it's resolved at least for now and and uh they're heading off to to spring training and we'll have uh, some baseball back by the end of july good deal pitchers and catchers sounds good pitchers and catchers. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i got a segment it's called Farrell's five i asked five questions and you're going to have fun with these. All right. Um, toughest person you ever pitched against? Toughest as far person? As when, when you, as far as a batter. Adrian Beltre. Hands down, you know, come up to Angels playing. I mean, American League, I'm playing Beltre. Um, I think I got him out probably the first couple times I faced him. But back, that was back uh, when Adrian was with Seattle. Mm -hmm. And then I swear, once he went to Boston for that one year, it was just somebody, somebody took the strains off and he just went to, t I mean, he's back leg and balls over that green monster. Then he goes to Texas. The dude's hitting like 350 every year. Mm -hmm. I, I could not get the dude out. I mean, balls had almost bounced, balls over his head. He just barreled up everything. So Adrian Beltre, hands down. Favorite visiting place to pitch? 
favorite place to pitch. Oh, uh, as a pitcher, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Gosh, probably Oakland, with all the foul ground. Uh, you know, from from a being selfish standpoint, yeah, Oakland. <laughs> uh, not not for not for the amenities, you know, by far, but uh, just on the fields on the field, Oakland, nicest place to go to, Yankee Stadium. All right. So this is an interesting one. Five baseball players or personalities you'd like to sit down and have a dinner with. And they could be past or present. Hmm. Gosh. That's tough because I feel like the, the favorite guy that uh, I would sit down and love to sit down with any time would be Tory Hunter. Favorite guy I've ever met in the game of baseball, hands down. Um, but uh, I would probably enjoy sitting down with Ken Griffey Jr. in his prime, though, back when, you know, he's 21, 22 years old. He's got that swag and just hear what he is going on in that dude's head because he had it figured out. And, and growing up, I mean, that was my that was my idol growing up was was Griffey. That was, I mean, he he just made baseball cool and as a kid you're like the first time we saw that big deal so you got three more okay <laughs> you got three more people oh you said five right and you can only oh, give me two <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> uh, and I can be past or present so. yeah, yeah yeah past um gosh I'd probably uh I'd like to sit down with Roger Clemens, being a, a pitcher standpoint. Um, mm, Mo, Mariano Rivera, okay. being a bullpen well, guy. Old. And then uh, I would like to say Babe Ruth, because it's, it's Babe Ruth. I mean, to sit down and just see what that guy, eating dinner with that guy is going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. All right. Go to, all right. Go to pitch you would use to get a to strike out somebody to get them out to win a game. What's your go to pitch? Like your favorite go to pitch you use to get someone out to win a game? Yeah, uh, curveball. Curveball. Just curveball. Yeah. yeah. Curveball. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't always working, so you'd have to you know go plan B. But assuming assuming level playing field, every, all my pitches are working. Yeah, I want to throw the hook. Good deal. And then my final question for, well, actually, I got, actually, it's a feral five. There's a bonus one, but I always use a bonus with feral five. Uh, pre-game, favorite pre-game meal? Oh. Uh, as a visiting player in going into Tampa Bay, it would make these uh, Cuban sandwiches on the hot flat top grill. And, I mean, you go in there and you just <laughs> – I mean, you leave, gain 10 pounds. You just <laughs> hammer them all day, every day. Wow, that's awesome. And here's the bonus. Favorite play-by-play -play and or color announcer you want to call your games? And there's been so many out there. It could be past or present. Or if you have a list or a group. Uh, I'll give you more than one if you want to use, but, you know, your favorite. If you were on the yeah, mountain, my favorite, home. probably just because, you know, being a West Coast guy would be Vin Scully. I mean, that's – I'm sure you've probably heard that a lot from ball players, But, yeah, Vin Scully, hands down. Vin Scully, that's some good stuff. Who do you like now out there? Because there's so many good ones out there now. Is there one you like nowadays? Um, gosh, off the top of my head, um, I'm going to be honest, since, since I – I haven't watched a ton of baseball since I retired. <laughs> kind of took a break. I'll tell you what. Course, you said you said you were on the golf course. So that's probably right. I've been out on the golf. <laughs> um, but uh, I will be watching a lot this summer. I promise you that because I'm going to be waiting to see what goes on and see how this all plays out. I'll give you my list of guys I enjoyed listening to growing up. Okay. It's obviously Ben Scully. I mean, that right. Guy, and he did the NBC games. Um, I tell you some other ones. Like I love the all the Carey guys. That's Harry Carey. That's Chip yeah. Carey. That's Skip Carey. All those like Skip Carey would listen to him on the Braves games because when they broadcast the Braves games out the country, right? Uh, those were cool. Jack Buck, I thought he was awesome, and I think Joe was good too. He he does a good job. Joe's good. Joe's good. Yeah. 
And what was weird was hearing Dick Enberg call him baseball. Because I'm so used to him with football and basketball. And then with the Padres, he was a big time baseball guy. So those those were kind of the ones that really come to mind to me growing up, you know, listening to baseball. Al McGuire, Al Al Michaels when he called baseball. Okay. It's pretty cool. So those are the ones I kind of grew up listening to, but nowadays it's it's pretty much, you know, there's you know, this those second generation guys, you know, that have called games. So those are kind of my on my yeah. my list of guys. Yeah, and Bert was there in, in Minnesota. I was there. It was mm-hmm. um Bert's uh kid. Um, Todd actually drafted me as a scout for the Angels. Wow. How about that? That's pretty yeah. cool. And then, and then how could I forget uh, Bob Uecker and, and, you know, Joe Morgan and John right. Miller and those guys. And, you know, those are just – this is fun. Fun listening to those guys call There's, a game. But, but Vin Scull, I think he's the gold standard because I remember listening to a game, they, and it was interesting. So he'll, he'll be telling a story. So he'll, he'll just go on. Like, I think he, this is neat. I think if you look it up, you'll see it. He's telling a story about why there, there's not a 13th floor on buildings or at a hospital. I was <laughs> unlucky. So he's telling this story, and he says, in the middle of the story, he says, ball one. And then he, he keeps going with the story, and he says, you know, strike two. And then, you know, so he's, like, still telling the story, <laughs> not missing a beat, and he's still calling the game. <laughs> It's it's unreal, and and I remember growing up, my uh, my grandma loved Vince Scully because she goes, I can listen. I don't even have to watch the baseball game. I know what's going on, and then I know the entire background of all the players because you get stories of you know childhood or coming up through the minor leagues or what their parents did and all that. She goes, I feel like I knew every player that was playing in that game because of Vince Scully would tell stories and like you said, not miss a pitch in the game. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, Marty Brenneman, who used to call the Reds games, and I, his son, Tom, they do a good job calling okay. baseball. So, and Bob Costas, I think he's good with baseball. Because that's really – it's funny how he was good with football, but he hated football. He loved baseball. So Really? I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, if, if you watch – because he's really bashing the concussion stuff that happened in oh, football. Okay. So right. but he prefers baseball over any other sport. So if you ask him, I mean, you've ever seen him. Hey, Bob, yeah. you know, what you think of football? I hate it. So there you go. <laughs> so, but hey, Kevin, uh, so what are you doing nowadays other with this cup thing? I mean, are any other things connected to baseball or, and anything else in general? I'm, uh, I'm helping with this, this company called Sports Me, um, but just as kind of an advisor to, um, they're, they're launching a platform where it's basically, like you could go on and hold, you know, your show or whatever from a platform, kind of like a, it would be like Instagram live, but you could have segments. So you could film it like right now. And then you could have people subscribe that could watch it and you could do one a day, a few a week, and, and they could, you know, watch different stuff. So you wouldn't have to do a segment and uh, same thing. Players could get on there and do like, pre post game interviews talk about you know what's going on why they threw this pitch different deals and uh interact people could send videos ask them questions um so there, there's a lot of stuff going on in the works with that um you know we've had a lot of uh the uh what are you, journalists like um you know newspapers magazines that they're nobody actually gets to hear their personalities it's all through the articles right but this is a way that they could their, their fans, their readers, their subscribers could actually get to know the person. So we've had a lot of uh, interest that way too. So these guys are, are launching this platform and, and um, you know, they brought me on as kind of a, a you know, a guy that could kind of talk to guys in the baseball world about, um, you know, just kind of building their own brand. Because right now it's, you know, you get a post-game interview and immediately guys put their wall up, right? You're in the clubhouse, the wall immediately goes up. You've been told, you know, your whole career, here's what you need to say, keep it short, don't say too much, because you might get yourself in trouble, and they'll run, and so you just, you know, guys, like, in your position, it's hard to get a a, a real, honest, laid-back, just interview while guys are playing during the season, because they're so scared of saying anything wrong, Um, this is a situation where it would basically be, like, you and I doing this, and then putting it on that platform, and people could watch it, you know, and, and then you would get subscribers and, and different stuff like, so it's, 
it's, it's definitely a, a great platform. I think it's, it's a phenomenal idea. I think it's going to do great. Um, but the whole tech part is way over my head. So I try to stay in my lane. <laughs> Join the club. If anybody wanted to follow you on Twitter, how would they do that? Or Instagram too? Um, yeah, so it's just at Cupcheck. Um, I don't have my own personal, but uh, yeah, at Cupcheck on, on all those. Um, so yeah, check us out. We got videos and pictures and anybody that uh, has any videos or pictures of them playing cup check, send it in, retweet, uh, repost on Instagram. You know, we could always have the, the guys too, like, uh, you know, Evan Longoria and, you know, Yasiel Puig. These guys will retweet some of the stuff, you know, that we do like some enter to win type stuff, you know, guys send in, people send in their emails or pictures, stuff like that. And you can enter to win, uh, you know, sign balls, sign jerseys, stuff like that. Good deal. Yeah, hey, I need to enter that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sign jersey. All right, well, well, Kevin, first of all, I appreciate your time, sir. And it's been an honor and a pleasure. And we'll we'll stay in touch. We'll see how this thing goes. And hopefully, you know, you'll you'll be rocking and rolling in it. And then it'll, you'll just take off. It, mm. it might it might be America's new pastime. You know, I base it, but it might surpass that. I like it. I like it. That's what we're hoping for. So. Jermaine, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. This is amazing. Deal. Good deal. So that's Kevin Jepson, 10-year Major League Baseball player, Angels, Twins, Rays, Rangers, and now Cup Check. Appreciate him having here on the WFSR Sports Sit Down. Thank you so much, sir. Again. Thanks, Jermaine. All right. And thank you so much for checking out this edition of the WFXR Sports Sit-Down on WFXRTV.com. For all the latest news, weather, and sports, there's only one place to go. That's WFXRTV.com. Also, download the WFXR News app. More good stuff. We are here to hook you up with the good stuff on WFXR. Again, thank you so much for watching the latest edition of the WFXR Sports Sit-Down on WFXRTV.com. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed day, everybody.